The first step is to decide on the data type for each column. And we need to specifically use SQL Server data types. So make sure each version of SQL has their very own set of data types. So we want to make sure that we're using the ones that are specific to SQL Server. We want to always use the smallest version that works. Because we're storing thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of records, it makes a difference how big each data type is, how big each column is. And so you want to consider what are the potential values that could be in this particular column and what is the smallest data type that will support all of those values. There are a couple details we need to know be able to make this decision well and that is that we're doing business in the US and so we're going to be using United States English, we're going to be using United States money, we're going to use United States phone numbers and United States addresses. But we also need to consider that we will have users that are of different nationalities. And this will make a difference when we come to deciding on data types for names. In this physical details template, it has every table with each of the columns listed. And that first column that we need to fill in is the data type. So we need to be able to look at the data type and identify, or look at the column and identify which data type it needs to be. Now we always want to refer back to the scenario to make sure we're staying in line with what the scenario says. So let's find out if the scenario says anything about the user ID. So right here, this, the scenario says the user ID is a character and numeric value combination. So it starts with the characters S and U, and then it has seven digits after that that are numbers. So there is no data type that says it's characters and numbers, but numbers are characters. So we can use one of our character data types. Now there are four character data types. There's char and varchar, and the difference between those are is character. So when you use char, it's always the same size. And so you specify how big the space is allocated. And whether the value fills up the space or not, the space is entirely filled in the database. And then varchar said, well, it can vary. So every time we enter this value, it might fill up a different amount of space. And so the system will only allocate enough space. This one you put a maximum number of characters in. And that specifies this can be up to this many characters. But now it will vary based on what the actual value is. So if you have varying, then you want to do that. But in this particular case, we have constant. Now there are two other data types and they start with an N, so N char and N var char. And what this means is that every character is stored as two bytes. So in char and var char, each one is stored, each character is stored as one byte, which is works really good for ASCII characters, uh, but doesn't work for Unicode. So Unicode requires two characters, or two bytes per character. So when you put an N in front of it, then each individual character ha is made up of two bytes. So it effectively doubles the size of the data that you're storing. So in this case, we want to make, that's a critical decision, whether we use N varchar or N char versus char or N char. So we know what size it's going to be. It's going to be every one is going to be exactly the same size. It's going to be nine characters long. So we don't need to use the, the varchar part of it. And so now let's decide whether it needs to be um, N or not, whether it needs to use Unicode. We're using the character S, the capital S, character capital U, and then the numeric characters. And all of those exist in ASCII, so there's no reason to upsize to the Unicode. So this then becomes, so we need to remember that we're going to use all caps whenever we use an SQL keyword. So char, and we want to specify exactly how big we want it to be. It has a default value, but we want to specify how big it is so it doesn't take that default value. And that default value is one, so it would definitely not be big enough for us. But there we have char nine. Now we get to first name. And so if we check over here in the scenario, 
um, it just says first and last name. It doesn't give us any details. So we know, need to go back to our understanding that this particular, that we're doing business in the U.S., but we might have users of different nationalities. And so this would be a time when we would want to use Unicode because some characters are not available in ASCII. Some international characters are not available in ASCII. So we definitely want to go to the, use the N char or the N var char and now we need to decide is it going to vary or is it going to be a constant size and well with first names we know that it's definitely going to vary so we're going to use N var char and here we want to now remember that this varies and so what we're going to specify is the largest it can be so we need to identify how big do we want to allow for first names and I'm going to use 35 which is a common uh, standard for big enough for first names. I'm going to do the same for last name. Again, varchar and varchar 35. What about passwords? Do we want to allow Unicode characters? That seems like a reasonable choice. And how long do we want to limit those passwords? They're starting to get, you know, the longer it is, the more secure it is. So we need to decide a value that would be a good value for length of it. So I'm going to make this even bigger than first and last names and cap it at 128. And since it's a varchar, that means it won't store 128 characters for everybody, just for those that use really long passwords. And that gives them an upper limit. All right, what about user type? Let's see if we know something about users. We know that users can be system administrators, instructors, or students, or some combination of them. So we can identify this with uh, we need to figure out the values that would help us to distinguish this. We could use characters. So we could use a single digit, a number, that could tell them apart, one, two, three, four, or whatever, to be able to tell the differences. But then we'd always have to keep a key to let everybody know this is what a three is. So instead, we could use actual characters that would be meaningful. So uh, A for admin, I for instructors, S for students, AI for somebody who's an administrator and an instructor, AS for somebody who's an administrator and a student, IS for somebody who's an instructor and a student, and AIS for somebody who's all three. All right, and that gives us the maximum value would be three. Sometimes there would only be one. So we could use a varchar here as well and put the max at three. And then we need to consider if we need to be Unicode or not. And we definitely don't because our combinations, none of them include Unicode. So this can be a varchar and we have a maximum of three. Department code, they've given us some examples for department code. The longest one is four. Uh, we might want to check with our actual university and see what the upper limit of that might be. And we can go ahead and use this varchar again. Uh, but instead of three, we better give it a maximum that's bigger than that. So let's go ahead and make our maximum eight, do a search of all the department codes, and make that your maximum. Majors have exactly the same. Let's see what it tells us about majors. And it doesn't. So here again, we would want to verify with our university. This one's going to need to be longer. Computer science takes up 15. We'll make it a little bit bigger than that and leave it at 24.